Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, thank you. Uh, I prepare my paper in English, so please, uh, who does need an interpreter, let's group up as in previous cases. Okay, and uh, uh, I, on my turn, would like to greet all of the participants of this conference and extend our gratitude to the organizers of this exciting event, which signifies that we already built a very healthy body of information, which confidently exists within the frames of its own modality. Our conference will convey a very important message to the medical community, which will be forced to recognize the legality of this potent modality's role in healthcare. Despite of the fact that a lot of time has already passed since the TENS and scanner devices have been introduced to the medical community and shown their extraordinary curative abilities, yet the distribution and conveyance of this alternative modality propagates inappropriately slow. Dominating Western medical um, Western medicine imposes strict rules and regulations on any novice medical alternative diagnostic or treatment method, especially based on contemporary electronic technology. As of the scope of our interest, scanner was confined by the FDA within the narrow frames of definition as the pain relieving and muscle training device. All those practitioners who use scanner therapy even for a short period of time know that the benefits do stretch far beyond of that definition. Any practitioner who paid his professional attention to electrotherapy and adopted this appreciative concept of treatment, in my understanding, supposed to explore the nature of electricity in some extent. I went through this uh, curious path and I guarantee that in your endeavor of doing so, you will encounter with many interesting facts which will add to your knowledge, many interesting points which will orientate you via more and more effective algorithms in your practice. For better understanding of why electricity plays such an important conducting role in our lives, I would like to remind you about the environment in which the life on Earth has evolved. Geophysicists point out uh, to a cavity that exists between the Earth and the lowest layer of our ionosphere, uh, which comprises approximately 55 kilometers up to 60 kilometers. In 1952, Adolf Schumann mathematically predicted and then recorded standing electromagnetic waves in the ELF frequency band. It is, stands for extremely low frequencies, this abbreviation. The range of frequency extends from three up to 60 hertz. However, the lowest frequency and the highest efficiency mode of the Schumann resonance occurs at a frequency approximately 7.83 hertz. Furthermore, there are some observations that the frequencies over 35 hertz are harmf harmful when the life species exposed to them extensively and for a long period of time. So uh, it does not concern to uh, especially scanner therapy because uh, previous lecturers mentioned about the uh, delicate uh, frequencies and, uh, uh, of the scanner. This is probably because life developed amid the electromagnetic field of the Earth, which geophysicists have measured at about seven, from seven to 10 Hertz, wrote Dr. Robert Becker, who's, who contributed to our science his precious lifelong research, the part of which he introduced in his splendid books, The Body Electric and Cross Current. I strongly urge you to read these books, which will add to your knowledge a lot of information, which will help you to judge your actions more congruently within particular situations. A very valuable point that I have ever retrieved from his conclusions and successfully used in my practice 
is that the cell has its threshold of acceptance or admittance of both characteristics of current, the frequency as well as the intensity. Electrical energy is intimately tied to the human body and influences all of our life functions, directly or indirectly. It's important to bring that up to the level of our understanding of that notion. And not surprisingly, all the wishes uh, extend to the famous Albert Einstein's uh, equation, E equals mc squared. This equation states that all matter is equivalent to energy at the much slower rate of vibration. Electricity or any other manifestation of energy can only affect the body because it is already wired for it. And indeed, all of our organs and systems, physiology and even pathology, need an electrical potential to function. The majority of contemporary diagnostic and monitoring devices are based on electricity, EKG, EGMG, etc., are proven by decades in practice not to mention the permeability of the cell membrane, which would be blocked in the electrical potential if the electrical potential of the extracellular liquid would not match to the one of the cell membrane. Wherever we find the electrical potential, we can be sure that it obeys the rules of the nature and physics. There are two types of electricity, static electricity and current electricity. Static electricity is an imbalance of electric charges within or on the surface of material. The charge remains until it's able to move away by means of an electric current or electrical discharge. Static electricity is named in contrast with the current electricity, which flows through wires or other conductors and transmits energy. A uh, remarkable physician in Hippocratic tradition, Luigi Galvani, contributed one of the important stepstones in propagation of medicine through the path of its evolution. In his well-equipped lab, he was searching for a proof of the electrical nature of the life force. When he came up uh, with an amazing experiment, he observed muscle contraction while connecting those muscles with a dissected spinal cord via metallic wires and termed his discovery as animal electricity. His discovery would be more complete if he managed to understand that electricity was formed in the junction of two dissimilar metals. This correction, unfortunately, has been done by Alessandro Volta. And also, muscle contraction could be caused simply by bringing uh, the muscle in contact with the cut end of the spinal cord itself. Galvani also reported his observations of transmission of electrical force across the space when a spark produced by his electrostatic machine caused the contraction of the muscle held with metallic forceps by an assistant across the room. Nevertheless, Galvani, by experimenting with his static electricity, has found the current a discovery that shaped the world ever since. Okay. However, the electricity at that time was a little understood, mysterious force, which was claimed as the vital spirit of the life itself. In 1790s, Galvani's nephew, Aldini, used multiple applications of direct current to the patient's head to treat psychiatric condition. Despite Aldini claimed that the treatment was successful, he could hardly believe recognized as an unbiased investigator because of his involvement in attempting, or, or in attempting of revivifying the death through the application of DC current to fresh corpses to stimulate muscular movement. Nevertheless, this was the first recorded example of electrical therapy with a possible effective dose of electricity. For a deeper understanding of electrotherapy, it would be fair to appropriate the latest with the other types of energy medicine. Here, I would like to invite your uh, attention to the first, probably, oldest known medical document is believed to be written somewhere around 2000 BC. This work is attributed to Huang Ti and known under the name as Chinese Yellow Emperor's Book of Internal Medicine. 
That book contains almost all the volume of constituents of TS TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, like the concept of bodily energy called qi, which works throughout the balance of yin and yang, all the uh, meridians and acupoints and the appropriate acupuncture techniques and moxibition, moxibation were precisely described as well. Along with acupuncture, the placing of lodestone over the same energy points were also described. Although the latest was rec uh, considered as less effective than acupuncture, I am inclined to view this practice as one of the first attempts in using electromagnetic or energetic influence by means of application of magnetic force over the particular areas and acupoints. Any of described in this book techniques were viewed as influencing an internal energy system by introducing external energy. The above mentioned treatments and concepts must have uh, antedated the Yellow uh, Emperor's book by some additional thousand years, allowing necessary time for evolution starting from preliterate people's uh, practices up to the written manuscript. Despite so far, nobody has managed to reveal the nature of qi in the view of known to physics forces of energies. It is obvious that we can influence and manipulate the force qi almost by any means. Mechanical, heat, application, electrical, magnetic, electromagnetic, light and color application, chemical and even psychological. The life force qi flows through the network of meridians the knowledge that has been given to us almost 5,000 years ago, and now the all mapping of acupoints was proven to be precise by the ingenious invention of Dr. Roman Avakian, a device no, uh, known by the name as AccuVision, which enables to visualize acupoints and even the difference of intensity of the lattice. In contrast, with qi, we have a different picture of polarization of electrical electricity in human body. In spite of the ex <coughs> existence of two above-mentioned types of electricity in the nature, all the botanical and living species exist on the current electrical system of different complexity. One of the important properties of the current electricity is polarization which drives the electrical potential via particular pathways and interconnects all systems of the living uh, organisms. The driving force that facilitates that flow of the energy uh, forms from the complex interactions of opposites, chemical, heat and cold, the internal and external electromagnetic fields, and so on. The law of polarity is the foundation of everything in the manifested universe. We see examples of this law around us every day, day and night, male and female, cold and heat, happy and sad, up and down, young and old, rich and poor, and so on. These pairs of opposites describe all aspects of our world. The eight guiding principles of Chinese medicine diagnosis are completely based on the law of polarity. Those principles are as follows. Hot and cold, excess and deficiency, external and internal, yang and yin. Classifying the patients in accordance to these op opposite polarities lead the TCM practitioners to a better understanding of the illness and uh, appropriately to a more precise treatment recipes. Understanding of polarity patterns of the body is very essential. Above mentioned, Dr. Robert, Robert Becker and other researchers conducted measurement to map polarities of animals and humans. They came up to a similar pattern among all creatures. The head and the central line of the body tend to be electropositive, while the tail in primitive creatures, creatures and extremities in a more evolutionary advanced animals and in people tend to be electronegative. A fascinating experiment was conducted by March and Beams in the 1950s on flatworms. When a positive current was placed at the tail and the negative current at the head, 
the worm's head actually changed into a tail and the tail into a head. Yeah. Uh, the above mentioned pattern of humanity, uh, human polarity refers to normal healthy uh, state. However, when people get sick, the electrical pattern on the, of the human body may be distorted or even reverse its polarity within the local or a wider extent. One need to be able to indicate or determine the actual pattern of the electrical polarity within the spot or area of medical interest for the conduction of microcurrent therapy. Otherwise, the aggravation of the pain and symptoms will pop up out of blue. I would urge you to associate the incorrect placement of electrodes, here I am talking about the bipolar electrodes, uh, with the connection of positive and negative terminals of jumper cable in an attempt to charge the car battery. If the connection is inappropriate, the sparks will fly and, uh, or even the battery will explode. Uh, let's consider some tools that we <clears throat> use in our practice. Not crossing the line of the topic of our conference, I would like to bring to your attention the two principally different external probes that we use, bipolar and, bi and biphasic. Bipolar ones have their positive and negative electrodes distributed on different two probes, while the biphasic one ones have arranged both the negative and positive electrodes on one probe. The scanner is equipped with the corporal biphasic electrodes. The majority of practitioners incline to employ the ready-to-use scanner. However, they forget to appreciate or they neglect the presence of a port on the side wall of the device designed for switching on the external probes. Any major manufacturer of scanner introduces a number of different external probes. However, the majority of those probes designed as a biphasic. Different shapes and sizes of external probes are designated for conducting treatments in some specific areas of the body where it is not convenient to position the scanner itself with its corporal electrodes. When the external probe is attached to the scanner, the corporal electrode go off. But a number of years ago, I bought a scanner which did not have such a characteristic. At the first glance, I considered that as a sort of a defect because one could accidentally uh, touch the scanner electrode while working with the external one. But very soon, I started to use both of them simultaneously, enjoying the promptly noticeable difference in results. I would like to mention <coughs> That now <coughs> we will talk. Sure. No. I would like to mention that now we will talk about the treatment with two biphasic probes, because the treatment with two bipolar probes has its particularities and rules, which shall be regarded, and <coughs> we will return to that later. To be able to use two biphasic probes, one needs to have a simple adapter, which evenly splits the scanner signal for two probes. I haven't seen such an adapter in the market, so I made it myself. The application of these probes, a type of probes, does not, <coughs> uh, 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 does not significantly differ from the protocols described in provided manuals. There is one difference, though. Working with two probes enables the practitioner to save time and work <coughs> important, <coughs> and most importantly, to get very important uh, significant advantages. For example, when I conduct general treatment, three pathways and six points, I do not go through the segments one by one, but use the simultaneous application of probes on the left and right sides of the paravertebral roots. What one may get out of it? First of all, the simultaneous stimulation of two para parallel segments of the spinal cord acts more profoundly than in a sequential version of it. Spinal cord has a number of crisscrossing pathways uh, within each of its segments, and uh, a unilateral, uh, unilateral stimulation may create an imbalance within the opposite half of the spinal cord. In the same time, continuing this notion, 
I'm inclined to presume that the parallel stimulation of the spinal cord balances the two halves of it when we have a pathology in reference to the one side of it. The scanner surprisingly feels the difference. If you apply the biphasic external probes on the parallel segments of the spinal cord, in most cases the patient in the beginning will feel a difference of the intensity of the electricity on the skin from absent to a certain degree. Thereafter, as a usual, the difference equilibrates upon a time, which in my opinion indicates a positive result, that is the, in the, the balancing of the imbalanced side. I have used these techniques many times, and they are not limited to the general treatment only. They may be uh, applied uh, in a broad spectrum of consideration of different pathologies. I happen to retrieve a very important fact uh, out of my experience, which is the scanner is able to comprehend and analyze the remote areas of the human body. The notion that was confronted by some scanner engineers in the beginning, and later one of them agreed with me and practically added an additional port for the second probe. Apart from all of this, any treatment in uh, different uh, healthcare modalities is being su successful when a specific positive vi uh, vibrational resonance created with the target tissue. There is a Jacques Benveniste conducted a lifelong research in that area and called this principle digital biology. He significantly proved the resonant action of homeopathic remedies. An interesting story happened, by the way, with uh, Dr. Reinhold Wall, uh, which served as a hint for inclusion of a plate from a neutral metal in the circuitry of his device, where he was positioned different herbs, medicine, minerals, and so on, and tested their resonant influence on appropriate acupoints. While demonstrating his electronic testing device in professional auditorium, he called a volunteer and started his measurement of distal acupoints. During the procedure, he got quite pathologic, pathologic readings uh, from the intestinal points. The volunteer confessed that he had a diarrhea. During the intermission, one of his colleagues suggested to take some medicine against diarrhea and shared a couple of pills with him, which he had put in his pocket. After the break, Dr. Wall resumes his uh, measurement. However, to his surprise, could not find any deviation from the normal readings. After questioning the sick gentleman, Dr. Wall paid attention on those pills in his pocket. When he again repeated his measurement with and without pills, he came to an unmistakable confirmation that the resonant field of those pills, even being within the pocket, corrected the pathological condition. Oh. As I mentioned above, it's possible <coughs> and beneficial to employ two biphasic probes almost <coughs> in any treatment protocols. In every treatment manual, uh, we can find strong suggestions to treat different remote from the pathological manifestation of the disease areas. For example, the treatment of the symmetrical and reciprocal zones are conducted prior to or after the local treatment. I applied two biphasic probes on those areas in the same time. In my opinion, here we give the scanner a direct, a direct comparison between the bad and good area. A ready reference information for its block of biofeedback response. In such cases, the scanner supposedly <coughs> treats in a more efficient way quickly switching on the body's defense system and insisting all that algorithm to the defenseless pathological area. Uh, a few years ago, I have been invited to see a patient in Studio City. By the way, my friend Scott Maxwell invited me. Yeah, here, here is it. Here. I knew nothing in advance about her because uh, she was referred uh, and directly appointed with me by one of my colleagues. I saw her at her house. She was a uh, 41, 42 years old lady at the time. 
Her head was immobilized and uh, fixed to the right, uh, and she used to drag her left leg to the extent that she wasn't be able to get in the car without the help of her hands. That condition developed during approximately two or three months, and she was crippled already for four years. I could not receive any valuable information about the possible causation of her condition, and she didn't have any diagnosis to be able to spell out. Just some occasional symptomatic treatments that she wasn't aware of, and uh, from her words, the doctors told her that she would stay crippled for her lifetime. In addition to the, pro <clears throat> to the problems in her personal life, she lost a lot of business opportunities because of her appearance, especially in movie production business, where she had a subcontracting company. Physical examination did not reveal anything worth of attention, just painful to the touch neck, especially on its right side, and flabby muscle on her left leg. The reflexes on her left extremities were exaggerated. Also, uh, there was obvious distortion of the pain feelings scattered all over her left leg. When I employed my scanner and started to search for asymmetries, I confronted with a significant stickiness on her right T6 uh, level, about two inches to the right from the paravertebral root. Dealing with this asymmetry, I got a very bright redness on that very spot, with, uh, which dissipate, dissipated with completion of two doses. By the way, I forgot to mention a very important detail, that after the scanner diagnosis, I always activate the auricular master points, acupoints, chain main point zero, thalamus, etc. Uh, these all points, I, uh, 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 <clears throat> all points, the other points that I uh, consider uh, within the interest, of medical interest, especially Shane Man and Point Zero, open up the body and make it more perceptive to treatment. I recommend it to, to activate. And uh, auricular acupoints, usually it's very easy to activate. They work, uh, anything will work. Acupressure, and, but I work, uh, I uh, love working with my lasers. Laser pointers of different colors. <clears throat> Here I want to deliver to you a very uh, important uh, uh, hint. Which ear to treat? I am prone to follow Dr. John Amaro's advice, a brilliant master of TCM, uh, who suggests to conduct a nostril test to determine the site of auricular acupuncture treatment. Uh, quite simply, if a person applied a apply the pressure to the outside of the nostril, let's say right nostril, blocking it completely, and uh, breathe it deeply through the left nostril, then repeat the procedure on the opposite nostril, one would discover they have a definite nostril that uh, is more open than the other one. From an ear acupuncture approach, this means if the right nostril is open, the left ear is more receptive to treatment. If the left nostril is open, the right ear is more receptive. If both nostrils are open, treat bilaterally. In addition, I love working again uh, with my uh, laser pointers, laser uh, on this acupoint. That takes about 10 to 15 seconds to activate this uh, acupoints, no more. Returning to our case, I proceeded the treatment by coupling the information from the different areas of the paravertebral zones which, with different areas of the affected leg. The session lasted one and a half hour, after which the patient, on my request to elevate her leg, kicked it, uh, kicked it above of my head. This evidence. Um, uh, despite I uh, <clears throat> appointed sequential sessions to uh, reach a more stable curative, curative effect, she disappeared out of my view. Thereafter, I learned from my colleague, who was her friend, that she got a new boyfriend and enjoys her uh, fashionable high heels. 
please don't ask me uh, for the explanation of this case because I cannot answer to your question. I am only presume that I happened to restore the flow of energy through the particular pathways which were blocked for some reason for such a prolonged period of time. However, I'm inclined to think that the congruent resonance played its uh, definitive role. Yes, now, you mentioned that after scanner treatment, then you open up the ACU pressure port? Uh, after scanner diagnosis, before treatment. Before treatment? Yes. So how do you use your laser to do that? Huh? Do you, what, you use your laser to do that? Yeah, laser pointers. I have different colors of laser pointers depending on what I need to achieve. Red, green, etc. they play a different role, uh, the color of the laser. To activate, usually uh, I use uh, red. Okay. Now let's talk about bipolar microcurrent stimulation. When the positive and negative electrodes are positioned on different probes, that enables to conduct electrical current uh, <clears throat> between two close to each other or remote parts of the body. Here we have to follow the rules, taking in account the map of the electrical polarization of the human body. I will remind you again, the head and uh, central line of the body tend to be electropositive, the extremities electronegative. When we do not apply electrodes according to the nature of polarities of the body, we are working against the body, and good results are unlikely. For example, in case of sciatica, when the correct polarity pattern is followed, and a positive electrode is placed on the lower back, and the negative electrode is placed on a painful area down the leg, pain is often reduces or eliminates. However, when the pain is localized only on the uh, back without radiation down the leg, so here, polarity is not as much of an issue. Pain is one of the most disturbing phenomena that accompanies us all throughout the human history. Because of its complex nature, pain control and management comprises one of the largest concerns in any medical profession. The Western and Eastern medicine have different views and theories on pain treatment. For the Western medicine, pain is a neurochemical phenomenon, while TCM views pain as a result of deficiency or stagnation of qi and or blood. And the liver is the organ most intimately connected with pain. The liver's function of qi flow regulation of, uh, is of prime importance in acupuncture pain ma management. There is a very good combination of acupoints called the four gates, consisting of bilateral stimulation of uh, large intestine of uh, HEGU, uh, large, uh, large intestine four, and liver three, uh, which is harmonizing treatment that relieves many kinds of pain and tension uh, through the liver. Uh, here I'm using my biphasic probes, simultaneous biphasic biphasic probes. Working with bipolar probes opens up a wide opportunity in using the large library of protocols and principles of TCM. <clears throat> the difference is that using the scanner devices as a source of microcurrent gives us a huge privilege in comparison with the other existing electrotherapy devices because of the uniqueness of the scanner signal. Also, the professional models of the scanner designed with much more when wider options in settings than the uh, standard electrotherapy devices. I get a noticeable professional satisfaction using different principles and protocols which are possible to implement only by means of two external probes. For example, the root and brush treatment comprises, uh, <coughs> uh, comprises one of the landmarks in TCM. Of course, one may go through the root and branch in a sequential way. However, one may get a substantial advantage when using the two external probes, whether bipolar or biphasic, which depends on the particular case. 
By the way, I have found a noticeable advantage in treatment mostly of joint pains when I treat them in motion. While treating, I ask the patient to change the position of the joint. And that uh, apparently opens up a new information to the scanner, and scanner reads some more and uh, can uh, answer to more uh, biofeedback responses uh, rather than in static, one static position. Uh, I would like to invite <coughs> your attention to a so-called macro-micro technique, which I use a lot. It is a combination of the acupoints on the human body and their reference points on so-called microcosm, projected on the different parts of the body, like uh, ear, nose, face, soul, etc. Here I have to mention a very important difference. While working with macro technique, we should keep on the rules of three Ps. The positive probe proximal. Positive probe should be positioned proximal and the negative probe, distal. But when you work with macro microsystem, this polarity should be reversed. So the negative probe should be positioned on the body or some affected area, and a positive uh, probe on the, uh, let's say, auricular point of the appropriate reference point. Yes? Yeah, earlier I had asked this question about polarization with the skin on. They said there was no polarization. You're saying that there is a positive and a negative. That would be polarization. I said the body itself is polarized. So you're talking about the probe, the negative, and the... Yes, so uh, I told about the, the body is polarized itself in the nature. The nature of body is, it's, uh, it, it is polarized. And when you use, <laughs> and, we, and we, when you use two bipolar probes, you have to follow the current system of this polarization pattern of the body. If you place it opposite, so uh, you can get some uh, unwanted results. So how do you know which probe is positive and which is negative? You should know uh, in the first place. Uh, there is an adapter that divides, splits the electricity into two probes. One is positive. It should be provided by your supplier. I mean, Marfa. No, the, the scanner, I, 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 I told you in my uh, presentation that there are two types of probes. One by FASIC, that usually the scanner probe, corporal probes, and the most of them are designed. Except, for example, for that one for auricular, uh, I mean uh, acupuncture treatment. That is one is actually, actually negative and uh, the other positive. So the negative probe is different that is supposed to be held in one hand. That's why you differ. But when you make your own props or you can get some other ones, uh, you have to know or, or, or measure it if you get some occasional prop. Lay prop. It is very easy. Yeah. Do we have an atlas or you know, known picture of the currents of, in the body? Just like acupuncture points, do we have a you know, known uh, pathways of the electricity in the body, visualized? Uh, the, uh, there, is, uh, there are a lot of information. You can Google up and uh, get a lot of uh, information about this uh, atlases, but I recommend you to view and uh, get a very interesting book of Dr. Stone, Randolph Stone, or Reinhold Stone. Oh, my gosh. Uh, he's a very interesting chiropractor. Uh, the book names named Polarity Therapy. Polarity, you know that? Uh, yeah. Very, uh, there are, uh, it is a very interesting book, and you can find a lot of uh, graphics and schematics, et cetera, et cetera, of different energy flows. The last, I don't want to leave... Uh, <clears throat> A, con a confusion after my presentation. I am a strong proponent of scanner therapy in its classic version, and I use it a lot. Uh, the ingenious protocols of the pioneers of scanner therapy, such as Yuri Garfinkel, Alexander Rivenko, and others, 
help thousands of patients and continue to serve as a potent guidelines and alter in alternative health care. Nevertheless, the beauty of evolution of the science is the contribution of new proven discoveries which are being added to the priceless fund of our healing heart. Art. <laughs> healing heart. Okay. 